We are back on Morning Way. Our guest with us this morning is MTSU uh, professor John Vile talking politics. Always interesting having him on. We're just bouncing the ping pong ball around uh, on a lot of topics. Let's face it, so much worth talking about. Let's go to Grady. Grady, good morning. Good morning, uh, Dick. Learning professor. Uh, you know, uh, Trump, uh, all you got to do is pat him on back, throw a big parade. He comes back, he wants to have a military parade. I mean, we got the strongest military in the world. Who needs to see him, you know, sit there and watch him roll by with all the tanks and, and uh, uh, bombs that we have. You know, and I've got a friend that's two and die man. He's been in China for the last five years. Anything they bring in, he can build it. You know, and, and they're taking American products and they're sending them back over here cheap. That's where Walmart, you know, come from. You know, uh, Chinese products. Everything you see now comes out of China, made in China. But, you know, the biggest thing with the Supreme Court is they're going to have to rule on law and order, which this president that we got, he's done everything he could to break law and order and disassemble this United States as we know it. And he's going to have a Supreme Court that's going to be loyal to him. And I'll hang up with the sales comments this morning. All right. Well, do you think so? You know, um, I was wondering, they were saying that John Roberts, you know, the uh, the head Chief of the court, Justice. Chief Justice, is going to be the new swing vote. I don't know if that's true. Uh, um, but, I mean, and there's a good chance that it is. I, yeah. I, I, the one caution I would give is, yes, the people that he appoints, if they're conservatives, they're likely to be loyal to a conservative agenda. Sure. Are they going to be, would they be loyal in a case like U.S. versus Nixon? where you have a subpoena against a president for possible criminal wrongdoing, I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. uh, if I recall correctly, four out of the five justices, one of whom abstained, uh, voted against Nixon in U.S. versus Nixon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, and you might have, you, you, we might today think the main issue is going to be abortion. Uh, five years from now, it may be something completely different. You know, the the, yeah. the main sort of and I, immig you know immigration certainly is. A I wanted your thoughts on that abortion though thing. I, I have heard various reports that. You know, some conservatives view this as maybe an opportunity to overturn sure. Roe v. Wade. And then I, I heard some commentators talking about, well, yes, there will be the more conservative votes to possibly do this based on some of the changes on the court. But some have said um, justices like Roberts is one of them right. they mentioned, and maybe a couple others who may be, you know, philosophically against Roe v. Wade, right. but they have a stronger affinity toward not Pre overturning right, precedent. precedent. Talk about that. The precedent, meaning that even though some of these justices may not really necessarily agree with it, on something like a law like this, which has such right. a strong precedent dating back that just out of respect for past precedent, they might refrain from overturning it? Yeah, I mean, the irony is, you know, you, one's view on precedent often depends on one's view of public policy. So okay. if you were arguing for precedent in 1973 when Roe was decided, you would say, well, up to this point, it's been a state matter. Uh, we've never interpreted the 14th Amendment directly to deal with this. Let's leave it to the states. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, however many years since 73, you do ha you right. do have a precedent. There, there was a, th there was an important decision some years ago in which three or four central judges basically took the position that you just indicated that they're not sure that they would have initially voted for Roe, but there was what they call a reliance interest to develop. You know, women and others had patterned their lives about w with the understanding that they would have accessibility to abortion, and given that, they didn't think that they should overturn it. The, the one thing to, the other thing to remember in, in the abortion area is that if we were to go back to pre versus Roe versus Wade, it wouldn't necessarily, almost surely would not mean the elimination of abortion right. in all states. I was going to ask you this. It would that certainly, in some states, particularly in the South and maybe in some parts of the, you know, think of Utah, some, some of the areas in the Midwest, 
you would probably have you know great restrictions maybe you almost outlawed it uh, but particularly for middle and upper class women they would simply do what they did before Roe versus Wade which is go to California go to New York uh, even go you know okay, so in what, Ireland they even went abroad that's so one reason I guess what you're saying is overturning Roe v Wade does not mean outlawing abortion under a federal law what that means is right. we're throwing it to the states right. and each individual state will be able to determine it so and you know if that happens there are always going to be states in this country that will allow it right. there just always will be and right. so what it will do is limit access for those of limited means right okay when you talk about the back alley abortions and things like this that were horrible um, it would just limit it but if you have a means of uh, financially paying for it where you could travel from Tennessee if it was banned right. here to California you can get an abortion legally sure. in the state of California. And probably you wouldn't have to go that far. Yeah, I'm not sure how many right. people, the general public, they always talk about Roe v. Wade being overturned and thinking, well, that means abortions go away. It's not making it illegal. It's just saying that no longer is there. Right. It is now left I to mean, the states. You know, there have been in the past, there have been some proposals to use of, you know, the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment to try to outlaw abortion. But, you know, many countries that have tried to outlaw abortion find that you, you know, and particularly now with the morning after pill and, and some of the, mm -hmm. you know, some of this, it would, it, it might change where they occur and how they're done, but may not have as big an impact as many people would anticipate on, on either side of the debate. Wow, that's going to be very interesting. All right, so as we go to this um, midterm election, I'm just mm -hmm. wondering, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's just so interesting with this president. He'll have um, uh, you know, a few good things going his way and then some things that twist the other direction. It's really hard for me to get a read on how much of a value he's going to be to some of the Republicans. Right? What do you think as we approach this now? You know, the tariffs, that could potentially be hurting the economy in some way here, and, and he's sticking to his guns there. Yeah. Um, you see a, a kind of a change going on with Democrats, potentially, where you have a, you know, a woman who is more or less self-described socialist winning right. in New York City as a, a Democrat. What, what do you think uh, as we approach that? Where do Democrats and Republicans stand in terms of, could there be a change in the House or the Senate? I think Trump is counting on the notion, you know, one of the things that seems to have propelled him into office was his strong stance against immigration. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's fairly reprehensible to refer to all, you know, people of Mexican ancestry as murderers and rapists, but he did it. Mm -hmm. and much to many of our surprise it seemed to work and I, I can't help but believe that part of what he did uh, you know recently in separating families uh, was to sort of push this button again I think mm -hmm. he clearly went too far uh, and I think I think there's a chance that he has mobilized about as many on the pro side of or, or the more liberal side of abortion that's uh, than he has on his own but certainly i think that's part of his thinking you know w one of the things about trump you, you get constant action mm -hmm. and i think some people who look at trump if you associate action with things being done it looks like he's a very vigorous president he's getting a lot done mm -hmm. i'm not sure I, again a lot of times take the, the, the meeting with, with North Korea, yes, you get a lot of publicity for it. It looks like you're the man of the hour. Does anything actually come of it? Mm -hmm. Time will, you know, time will tell. So, so I don't know. I, I, I do think, you know, I, th I think, remember we have 435 districts in, in the right. U.S. House of Representatives, and you're always going to have, an, you know, take t in Virginia, you have a senatorial candidate who apparently is, you know, pushing right up against you know, white nationalism about as close as you can get. Mm -hmm. Is he represented through the Republican Party? I hope not. I, I don't think that he is nationwide. But, you know, that's that's part of what you get when you get a country of our size and our diversity. Yeah, and I just wonder if we see both parties maybe going a little more. Like you said, that's a good right. example of an extreme side on the Republican Party that I don't think is representative of most, you know, thoughtful, right. well-meaning Republicans. And on the other side, you have a woman who's just one, you know, on the Democratic side in New York City who wants to abolish ICE. Right. You know, and that's that's pretty much far the other side. And I. I just worry personally, and I'm always someone who talks about compromise and, and moderation. And, you know, these days I, I hate to look and see if both parties are becoming more and more polarized, you know, than ever before. I, because I, I can tell you what, this woman who just won in New York ain't going to get along with that person in Virginia. And if those two become the standard bearers for their parties, 
ain't nothing getting done. I, I have this hope that Mr. Rogers is going to save America yeah. still. <laughs> <laughs> this new movie, yeah. infusing a little bit of kindness back into politics yeah. might be a very beneficial yeah, thing. Yeah, but I mean, because it just seems more potentially polarized. Um, people... I don't know, feel strongly, don't like, they compromise. I just wonder and it's, on that. It, yeah. It's hard to talk across party lines anymore. You, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, um, either camp, right. you, you know, sort of has demonized the other. Well, it's kind uh, of like even within the camps themselves. Within yes. the Republican Party, you have more of the moderate Republicans who can't stand some of the extreme ones and right. vice versa. And the same thing, if the Democrats somehow get hold of the House, you know, and you have some of these, you know, borderline socialists that are winning going in there with some of the more moderate Democrats, how are they, once they have the House, even to get along amongst themselves? You, you know, I, I rarely have a program here where I don't mention the article that Kent Seiler and I did. Yeah which was that the May West effect may, may elect Trump, which is anytime she had to choose between the lesser of two evils, mm -hmm. she chose the one she hadn't tried before. <laughs> and one yeah. of the things I think we did learn from the last election is correctly or not, well, both had very high negatives. Mm -hmm. And correctly or not, Republicans were able to demonize Clinton. Mm -hmm. She was not a very good candidate against somebody like Trump. Yeah. And, you know, the the... Trump's best hope for re-election, in my judgment, is to get someone, com you know, it would be to run against Nancy Pelosi, mm -hmm. <laughs> not mm -hmm. that that's very likely, but, yeah. you know, find someone else who has been equally demonized, and by comparison, mm -hmm. a lot of people would probably still go for him. Yeah, because I think you're right. I think a lot of people voted for Trump, if for no other reason, as voted you said. Voted against Hillary. Yeah, against yeah. Hillary. And they and they had other Republicans they could have gone with, but they voted for Trump because he was an outsider. And it really, you didn't know what was going right. to happen. Now, with a track record, many are going to have a better idea of what he's all about and what he's going to do. And some of them will maybe like him even more. Some of them who voted for him may say, wow, well, I didn't realize he'd do that when I voted <laughs> for him. I'm going to go the other way. Or do you think he could end up having a challenge within the Republican Party? I think there's a chance. I think right now it would be very difficult. You mm -hmm. know, Kasich seems to have sort of positioned himself as a possible rival, Flake possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a few other people. Um, but to my knowledge, there has not in recent American history been an example where there was a strong challenger from a party where that party didn't end up losing. 1980, for example, mm -hmm. I think it was 80, when uh, Edward Kennedy tried to challenge Jimmy Carter for the nomination. Mm -hmm. Carter got the nomination, but a, a Republican was elected. Yeah. Uh, and that typically happens in those circumstances. All right, let's take a break on that note. We'll be back. Our final segment. If you want to jump in, if you have a thought, question, comment, 737-7587, day after 4th of July. A lot of people sleeping in, I think. We'll be back, uh, finish our conversation with Professor Vile right after this.